Hey, Flimsy Lunch Tray here and welcome to World of Warships for our Friday and Saturday videos. We're going to be featuring the Tier 9 uh, Premium uh, German Battleship, the Pomeran. And this ship is available for coal. I'll put it in the bottom left uh, how much it cost uh, with and without the coupon. And it's been a very long time that I've wanted this ship um, and recently picked it up not too long ago. Um, just because Palmerin is a boss. Um, in today's video, here in Random's Battle, I'm going to be kind of hitting on, not kind of, I want to be focusing more on one of the strengths of this ship, or several strengths, and there also are several weaknesses about the ship. Yes, this ship is a brawling battleship with uh, some good secondaries, 12 guns, um, torpedoes, hydro, you know, but actually what I'm going to be kind of focusing on a little bit more is just talking about the strength of her health pool, um, her armor scheme, um, defensive measures even with, again, that hydroacoustic search that I've already referenced, and the German hydro of six kilometers detecting uh, enemy ships. Um, but I want to focus more on that um, here in the random battle today. This battle is going to be a bit one-sided. However, uh, this video kind of shows some of the strengths of this ship, as well as the, one of the uh, very strong weaknesses about the ship too is uh, also just uh, her AA. <laughs> it's pretty ineffective, especially when you're having to deal with tier 10 CVs or uh, hopefully not super CVs um, with its shorter than standard range for uh, AA. And also uh, the main battery guns in terms of their Sigma, uh, their dispersion, their wildly inaccurate, but that's usually what Wargaming does when they give a ship with lots of guns, they tend to nerf uh, the Sigma, uh, vertical and horizontal dispersion of those guns. Uh, if, you know, this is like a really brawling ship that has a lot of other traits that help its overall um, armament damage performance in the game. So I'll start focusing more in on um, kind of what I really want to hone in on uh, when we get closer to C cap here. But let's just talk about some general things about the ship. So I've set Pomeran up as being a uh, full-on brawling battleship I'll Talk about a few of the statistics uh, stats with that, but she is a um, Secondary build brawling battleship I think it'd be a bit hard to try to go for a main battery build just because of how poor uh, the Sigma is so let me just kind of draw out some things um, that I, about the ship when I'm looking at the uh, ship tool filter so when we talk about her health pool now she doesn't have the best uh, health pool, largest amount of health pool here in the game that would belong to Musashi at 7,300. But Palmer um, would be would place at slot number five, because um, there's Kurosarge B, Kurosarge, uh, those are two different ships, three and four, but they're identical, right? And then you have Palmer B and Palmer. So technically fifth best in the game in terms of hit points. Now, this is uh, stands out immensely when you're looking at the other uh, German not so much a battleship line, but a battle cruiser line, where Prince Ruprecht is has the worst hit points of any tier nine battleship in the game. But yes, Prince Ruprecht is kind of like a scalpel that you have to wield well because she's such so aggressive in terms of her main battery, her torpedoes, her um, secondary armament. But typically, if you put a Pomeran against a Prince Ruprecht, I'm going to go with the Pomeran over the Prince Ruprecht. Um, just because of the hit point pool is a very stark contrast. And usually even when you're playing brawls or ranked, you'll see that difference stand out. So uh, she has fantastic uh, hit point pool, as well as uh, the armor scheme, which works really great here on the Palmeran. So just kind of to talk about here, kind of looking at our mini map, a lot of enemy team, you can see there's a good number of them that are back in the 6-7 line. Um, but I've decided I'm going to go ahead and uh, step on the cap. And the only reason I'm going to do that is honestly because I also have Hydro Acoustic Search. And you saw me pop the Hydro, like I had a six since and I popped it earlier and I was like, oh, like that was perfect timing to pop the Hydro to make sure I avoided those torpedoes since there's a uh, destroyer uh, around. And we get this nice broadside in Illinois. So here's a good example of the guns, right? Broadside battleship, do we punch through with these 380 millimeter guns? Well, we get four of our pins and three pins and over 16,000 damage, so um, Illinois kind of has a trollish uh, citadel. Uh, anyhow, I, if my memory serves correctly. So here we are flexing our health pool and 
flexing our armor scheme. Uh, so I'm denying the enemy team points by being in this cap. And this is kind of basically, as I'm going to keep talking about the statistics of this ship, this is what I want to hone in on with you guys, just uh, show, showcasing here, is that we can kind of barge into a space and occupy that space, because um, Pomo can do that really well. Uh, where, you know, as an example, again, I couldn't do this with Prince Rupert, I couldn't do this with other types of battleships in the game that just don't have as good as a hit point pool um, or uh, armor scheme like the Pomeran has. So we're going to be utilizing our damage control party and our repair parties a lot uh, this game. Now I'm talking about the main battery uh, here on Pomeran. Um, in terms of the Sigma, <laughs> brace yourselves. Um, Pomeran has the third worst in the game, only being beaten out by the Marlboro and the Navarin, if I get that correctly. You know, and uh, all these three ships I just mentioned have lots of guns, right? You have Pomeran's 4x3s, Marlboro's 4x4s, and uh, Navarin's 3x4 guns. Um, so the Sigma is 1.5, pretty bad where your vertical dispersion is 92 meters and horizontal dispersion is 180 meters. Um, and then if we go to look at your secondary DPM in the game, I was actually kind of surprised. Pomeran doesn't rank as high as I thought she would. Um, Pomeran B and Pomeran rank ninth slots 19 and 20 with roughly 253,000 um, secondary DPM. That doesn't take into account, you know, building into your secondaries a bit more for my uh, understanding in uh, recollect when we talk about the AP shells here if I pull up their damage um, Pomeran is at the bottom of the pack in terms of their damage uh, where they do 11,600 uh, AP salvo landing and then let's go ahead and talk about the anti-aircraft as you're seeing us kind of get harassed here um, by the enemy midway as we going to dodge some torpedoes here your AA strength on the Pomeran um, from best to worst, you are position 24-25 uh, with Pomeran B and the Pomeran. Um, so, not great. And you don't have that standard, like, let's say, 5.8 kilometer range that many, many battleships get here at Tier 9. Uh, it's 5.2 kilometers. Uh, your long range DPS is 118. Um, your medium range and medium DPS is non-existent. And then you have short range, which is 3 kilometers. Um, and then 326. So that's kind of them nerfing your AA and nerfing your main battery dispersion just because of how this ship excels um, in other ways uh, here in the game. Uh, so I think I'm going to leave that uh, at that for the moment. And coming back in here to the gameplay. So we can see we're already up to uh, 1.8 million potential damage. This game actually is a rather shorter game. And I thought about, well, I could, maybe I'd play Pomeran a bit more and I can really showcase, you know, this uh, German battleship with really strong armor and hit point pool, uh, aggressively pushing in um, with its torpedoes and secondary armament, right? But there's also this element that Pomeran does really well in the game um, in just occupying space and key objectives and being a real difficult pain to kill. Um, this, I could actually make an intermediate player guide uh, video out of this battle um, in the sense of you tend to see, unfortunately, um, there's a good portion. Um, this is not, this is just a critique. It's not like being mean. Uh, there is a decent portion of the player base that you will notice uh, in them playing battleships in their positioning, they play their battleship like their health pool has the health pool size of like, let's say a tier six destroyer. As soon as they take any damage, um, they immediately back off. Um, they don't want to get too close to the enemy team, which I mean, I understand because as you get to the higher tiers, it's a lot more, uh, if you make a mistake, you get punished for it more severely than let's say tier five, tier six. But you see a lot of battleship players who don't necessarily flex their health pool. And that's one of the strengths that you have that you can take attention off your cruisers, your destroyers, um, and just being that uh, present uh, source is unfortunately I was really hoping for more on that broadside midway um, but being that battleship that takes up space and draws attention of the enemy fire incoming fire away from your teammates on yourself um, as you can see we're almost gonna be hitting 2 million potential damage um, here shortly so that's 
one of the strengths when you're playing battleships, especially battleships like Palmer. Now, I'm not saying all battleships in the game, even at the higher tiers, do this. Like I, like uh, Prince Ruprecht. That's just I'm going to keep picking on Prince Ruprecht. Prince Ruprecht doesn't do that role very well, just because of her more. Uh, she doesn't really have a strong armor scheme, um, and she just takes a lot more. Uh, takes more damage uh, rather quickly. Didn't say something like the Palmer, but you play those two ships just differently in general, right? Um, in the same way, like the let's say the Frederick de Grossa, right? If I go back to um, general information for tier nine battleships here, um, health. Uh, the Frederick de Grossa, where are you? Oh, detect by sea. That's why I'm not seeing it. Uh, is number five, uh, five, or would be technically number four, um, in having 84,300 points. So, Fedek de Degosa does uh, similar um, in playstyle to, to the Palmer in that regard, just uh, a big difference in between how their main batteries uh, function. Um, so we're soon getting uh, closer to the end of the battle here. I'm probably going to do another Palmer video, uh, play video, uh, but I think today I wanted to, one, highlight what I've been discussing, showing you that your AA, I mean, we had a lot of planes flying over us and we only did, uh, only killed 13 planes. Um, so that, that kind of sucks. <laughs> but we did get that cap, uh, we did draw a lot of attention off the enemy team, and you can see we actually even did 86,000 spotting damage. That's just, uh, that's a bit crazy um, to think. Um, and that was because we were kind of being more that frontline battleship, utilizing the islands well, utilizing the hydro, and paying attention to enemy ships that were over on that uh, five, six, seven line who were being cheeky and getting some shots at us. So, battle's gonna end shortly. We're gonna get a thousand points. I'm just gonna go ahead and end it because I'm not really keen on just showing you a CV sailing up to the corner of A1 as is typical here in World of Warships. So, as being between battleship, uh, we're gonna actually do pretty good here with 1.4 million credits earned. Uh, 10,000 XP, 2,050 free XP, and being the Dreadnought here with 119,000 damage. Now, we didn't get any kills, and I wasn't actually expecting the team score result to be number one on the team. Um, and you can see probably the mixture of the planes and a little mixture of that spotting damage, perhaps. I don't know. Um, played some roles into that, as well as, of course, your cap. So 2,100 uh, base XP, and as I said, it was going to be a bit of a, a blowout, um, unfortunately, for the enemy team. We took 98,000 damage, almost 2 million potential damage, uh, all said and done. Uh, with not too much happening with our secondary batteries, only 11,000 damage there, whereas mainly our main battery was uh, doing most of the damage in this game. And here you can see with the premium account how things all land. Now, I, again, I recognize this doesn't like fully future and showcase the Pomeran um, because I wanted to focus on a strength of this ship that I don't feel like is talked a lot about. And then again, her large hit point pool, uh, health pool, uh, and her armor scheme. Um, and just playing a battleship that is not afraid to, you know, you trade hit points. That's what you do as a high tier battleship with a lot of hit points uh, here in World of Warships. Um, so. So that being said, tomorrow I'll do an upgrade commander build video on the Palmeron. Um, I'll show you the build that I have set up. We can talk about maybe a few things you can switch around there as well, uh, depending on your personal preference and taste. So uh, if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you do want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And thank you as always to my Patreon supporters. So until next time, take care.